This is the first of two videos relating to application problems from section 2.5 of OpenStax Calculus Volume 2. The problems in this video relate to applications involving density and mass. So for this first problem, we have a linear density function. And so what we've learned in this section is that the mass is equal to the integral from a to b of your density function rho of x. I know it looks like a p, but it's actually the Greek letter rho. And so if our wire is two feet long, uh, we can assume that it starts at zero. So our integral is gonna go from zero to two. Our density functions is x squared plus two x. So just a relatively simple integral to figure out. Antiderivative of x squared is one third x cubed. Antiderivative of two x is x squared. We're gonna plug in two, we're gonna plug in zero and subtract. So we get one third times two cubed plus two squared minus one third times zero cubed plus zero squared. This is all zero, and so this is going to work out to be 20 over 3. Our density was pounds per foot, so our mass is going to be in pounds. All right, pretty similar problem, a little bit more complicated integral, but same basic idea. So we've got a pencil that's four inches long here. They explicitly tell us that it starts at x equals zero and goes to x equals four. And again, we have a density function. So again, our formula is that the mass is going to be the integral, in this case from zero to four of our density function, five over x plus two, and we're integrating that with respect to x. So this time we're gonna to need to do a substitution. So our substitution is gonna be u equals x plus two. The good news for us is that du will be the derivative of x plus two, which is one dx. So we don't need to do anything in our integral to get the substitution to happen. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and factor out that five. Since five is a constant, I can pull it out of the integral. So I've got five times the integral of one divided by u and dx and du are the same thing. Now, what about my bounds? Well, my old bounds were x equals zero and x equals four. So when x equals zero, that means that u is going to be zero plus two, which is two. So my new lower bound is the number two. My old upper bound was x equals four. And when x equals four, u is going to be four plus two, which is six. So my new upper bound is six. All right, so now I've got an integral that I can do. The antiderivative of one over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And we're gonna plug in six and plug in two and subtract. So that's gonna be five times the natural log of six. Absolute value of six is just six, so that didn't do anything, minus the natural log of two. Now we could leave our answer like that. Typically when we have a natural log minus another natural log, we'll wanna to try to combine those together using our log rule, which tells us that this is gonna be five times the natural log of six divided by two also known as five times the natural log of three. Our units are ounces per inch, so this will be five times the natural log of three ounces. So now we've got problems that relate to radial density. So the idea here is that we've got some circular object and the density at any given point is related to the distance that that object is from the uh, center of the object. So in this case, if my distance from the center is x, then at that point, the density is this function, uh, which in this case is e to the minus x squared. And again, what we learned in this section is for this kind of density problem, where you've got a density that only relates to the distance from the center, that our mass is given by the formula, the integral from zero, since we're starting at the center of the disk, to r, the radius of the disk, of two pi times x times rho of x. So that comes from the fact that the circumference of a circle is two pi r. And again, we worked through the derivation of that formula in the lecture. So let's plug in our formula. Our radius is six. So this is an integral from zero to six, two pi times x and rho of x is e to the minus x squared. And so that's our integral. Now, again, a little bit more complicated integral here, but we've got this function minus x squared inside our exponential term. So we might be thinking to do a substitution, u equals negative x squared. In this case, du is minus 2x dx. So I do have to do a little bit of work to get my minus 2x. I've got a 2 and an x that I can move next to my dx, but I don't have a negative sign. So I'm going to have to put in a negative 1, and I'll have to put in a 1 over negative 1 out front of my integral. There's a pi in there that is a constant, and I can just get rid of that as well. So shuffling some things around, what I end up with is minus pi out front, integral from 0 to 6 of e to the minus x squared times negative 2x dx. And now I can do my substitution. So I still have negative pi. I'm going to change my bounds here in a second. This will be e to the u du. All right, what are my new bounds? Well, my old bounds were 0 to 6. 
So when x equals 0, u is going to be minus 0 squared, which is just 0 again. So my new lower bound, same as the old lower bound, 0. What about my new upper bound? Well, my old upper bound was x equals 6, which means u is going to be minus 6 squared. Note the placement of the negative here, right? Minus 6 squared like that is going to be minus 36. The square, we're not squaring the minus sign, we're just squaring x. So this would be minus 36. Now, we've got an antiderivative that's pretty easy, right? Antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. We're going to plug in negative 36, plug in 0, and subtract in that order. So we have minus pi times e to the minus 36 minus 1. If I distribute that negative, that's just going to give me pi times 1 minus e to the minus 36. And that's our mass. Again, given in ounces per inch, so if we need the units here, that would be ounces. All right, another radial density problem, same basic idea, again, same basic formula. The mass here is going to be integral from 0 to r of 2 pi times x times rho of x. In this case, my rho function is square root of 3x, So, and the radius is 5, so we're integrating from 0 to 5, 2 pi x times square root of 3x. Now, to help us out here, we can rewrite the square root of 3x as the square root of 3 times the square root of x. We've got a 2, we've got a pi, we've got a square root of 3. All of those we can pull out of the integral because those are all constants. So 2 pi radical 3. And we've got the integral from 0 to 5. x times the square root of x, we can think of that as x to the first times x to the 1 half, which is x to the 3 halves. We add those exponents together. So this is x to the 3 halves power. And now we can use our power rule. So we add 1 to that power to take the antiderivative. That gives us x to the 5 halves. 1 and a half plus 1 is 2 and a half. We divide by 5 halves, which is the same as, divide, as multiplying by 2 fifths. And we're going to plug in 5, plug in 0, and subtract. So we get 2 pi times the square root of 3 times 2 fifths times 5 to the 5 halves minus 2 fifths times 0 to the 5 halves. Now 0 to any power is 0, so that goes away. And we can simplify this fraction a little bit, right? We've got 2 fifths times 5 to the 5 halves. We can think of 5 to the 5 halves as being 5 to the first times 5 to the 3 halves. Again, kind of undoing what we did with the x's earlier, which means that I can divide out this 5 with one of these 5s, and my remaining exponent would be 5 to the 3 halves. Now, 5 to the 3 halves is 5 times 5 times the square root of 5. Right, This 5 we divided out, and this is what's left over, 5 times the square root of 5. So what we have is 2 pi radical 3 times 2 times 5 radical 5. And again, if we want to make this look really nice, we can combine the square roots together. We've got 2 times 2 times 5 is 20. We've got a pi, and then square root of 3 times square root of 5 is square root of 15. Our units are grams per centimeter, so this mass is going to be in grams. All right. Now, these last couple of problems just relate to the idea that when density is constant, we don't have to do an integral, right? So the only reason why we have to do an integral in some of these previous problems is when the density varies based on where you are in the object, right? But we're told in this case that this has constant density, 0.03 kilograms per square meters. So all we need to do is find the area, and the mass is going to be that constant density rho multiplied by the area. Since it's a triangle with base 2 and height 3, area is going to be 1 half base times height, which will be 1 half base is 2, height is 3, 1 half times 2 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, and this will be square meters. My density was 0 0.03 kilograms per square meter. My area was 3 square meters. The uh, square meters go away, and I just get 0 0.03 times 3, which is 0 0.09 kilograms. No integral needed. This last one, same idea, except we're talking about a sphere, so a three-dimensional object with uh, density. And again, the density is per cubic kilometer. And so the mass here is going to be density times volume. In the previous one, we had a two-dimensional object, so it was density times area. In this case, three-dimensional, so density times volume. So what's the volume? Well, the volume of a sphere, right? we're told that this nebula is roughly spherical. Volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, so that's 4 thirds 
times pi. Now, what's the radius? We're told that the radius is 9 trillion kilometers. Let's think about that. That's 1,000 with three zeros, 1 million with six zeros, 1 billion with nine zeros, 1 trillion with 12 zeros. So my radius is 9 times 10 to the 12th, and I'm cubing that. And then my density is 6.55 times 10 to the minus 10. And my volume, again, is 4 thirds pi times 9 times 10 to the 12th, and all of that is cubed. When we multiply all that out on our calculators, we end up with approximately 2 times 10 to the 30th, and we're given kilograms as our units, so that's the mass of this gigantic nebula. So again, we focused on the density and mass problems. In the next video on this section, we'll talk about the other applications uh, that we talked about in this section.